Okay, guys, uh, we have a special guest uh, today um, for my channel. Yeah, it's uh, Tum Inogia. We guys go, uh, yeah, we go way back. Um, we met each other through martial arts. Uh, uh, he's going to show a very cool technique. Um, I won't uh, talk too much about it, but it's about uh, getting uh, control from the guard and preventing the guy from posturing. And he has a few uh, very nice chokes um, that don't lose a position and uh, they're very effective. So can't wait uh, for, uh, for him to show us. Okay, so before we dive into the technique, just a little bit of the concept behind it. I always had a hard time holding someone's posture just with pure strength because I'm not so, so big. I mean, Andy isn't super fat, but you're like, 80 kilos? 90? 80. Stronger than I am. So if I want to hold Andy in my guard with only using my arms, I'm going to have a hard time. So I'm going to show you a setup I like to use from close guard. And depending on Andy's posture, I have a variety of ways to get there. Yeah? We're not going to do the whole uh, Aikido swim through, but imagine Andy is, for instance, holding everything really tight. Uh, I'm trying to prevent my posture. I'm just going to go up on my elbow, post up, and here I'm going to fake a wrong side hip bump sweep. Yeah? And I'm going to try and pull Andy down together with me. Either making a gable grip and falling down, making an angle or diving straight for the overhook here. So my basic setup is going to be an angle guard where I overhook Andy's arm. Yeah, I want to be on an angle. I want to use my legs as much as possible. So I don't close my guard because the more I cross my ankles, the more my knees are pointed to the outside. So for Andy, it's pretty easy to now use his left elbow and try and work my guard off. And I just lost the position. So try and let go of the concept that you always have to cross your ankles. Instead, I put my foot on the hip, get this knee high on his back, and this knee, I'm gonna turn inside and these ribs. So if he wants to do the same thing, he now has to use his hand, which opens up the triangle for me, where I just put the hand on his chest, turn my knee in, and go for the triangle. So I keep this position. Now, as I told you before, it's pretty hard for me to keep the posture of bigger and stronger opponents here. Especially in no gi, they just want to posture up, pull their arm out, or they want to put me back on my shoulders. So he pushes back into me, boom, gets his arm out, yeah, or he pushes me back into my shoulders and I just lost my angle. So we're going to upgrade and we're going to use our legs. Now we're going to call this today the, the shoulder pin guard. And that's actually the guard I've been playing with lately and it's a form of rubber guard where you don't have to be that flexible. So just real quick, if you're familiar with rubber guard, it's where I control my shin, get my elbow tight. We just passed the arm already and we're completely using our leg very high on his, on his head, preventing him from posturing up. We're gonna do a similar thing, but a bit easier. So first off, I need to get this arm out and I wanna wrap it all around my leg to go to his shoulder. Now in that transition, Andy will be able to pull his arm out. So as soon as I let go, he's gonna posture back up and I just lost position. So we're gonna maintain a frame. I'm gonna keep this knee tight and I'm just gonna grab my shin here on the inside. And this arm has two options, sorry, two, two tasks to do. First one, I need to pull my shin down and keep Andy close to me. Second one, I wanna flare my elbow out to prevent Andy from putting me back on my shoulders. So one grip, two tasks. Now I can do the transition. I still have to be fast, but I have some more space and some more pressure uh, for not losing Andy. So I'm going to extract my arm. I'm going to put it behind my leg and cup his shoulder like this. Okay, so I'm at an angle. Now important guys, just like with a Kimura or an Omoplata, I'm going to push down on this space here. So watch what happens. This leg goes down here, keeping his posture down. I cup his shoulder and I immediately frame his head. As long as Andy wants to go away, he helps me actually going into my omoplata and gogo plata setups. The only thing that can happen is when he goes up or tries to push me back on my shoulders. That's where this frame comes in. Either with the hand or with a gable grip or a three finger Jean LaBelle grip, pushing his head off and squeezing my knees together. Now, as you might see, the possibility to attack this arm is pretty easy and the step to going towards the gogo plata or either the omoplata is a very small step from this position. So from close guard, going all the way to omoplata is a huge step. I have to throw my leg over. So I have to do this setup and I at least go to the overhook guard. Now I make the step smaller. As soon as I go to the shoulder pin guard, the step becomes even smaller. It's only gonna be 10 inches to clear the head. So I upgrade my guard and I keep my pressure. Today, we're not gonna show any of these basic submissions. So just to cover the basics real quick, 
is going to be attacking either this side with either the Gogo -go or the Omoplata or the Kimura or attacking that side as soon as he tries to pass with the basic triangle. Yeah. So the problem with these three attacks is that in all of them I have to let go of my control. So as soon as I commit to the Gogo -go Plata or the Omoplata or the triangle, I just lost the guard. So I like to start off first with some more, uh, some more of the safer chokes to prevent him from escaping the guard. And only when those don't work, I'm going to choose an angle. So once again, the setup to the position. Depending on Andy's situation, if he plays, a, if he plays without posture, so he puts his elbows down, his head down, he's going to be in this position. Yeah? Now, if he keeps his elbows super tight, Keep it all super tight. Yeah. Now it's super hard for me to play guard. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push his head off. Boom. Yeah. Keep your head tight and try to prevent me from pushing your head. So I, I don't want to keep him down. I just want to push him away. Boom. And A B myself underneath. Then I lift my left knee. I'm going to collect this arm. Boom. And upgrade like this. Okay. Now from here, grab my own shin, hold him tight, push him off, switch to the shoulder pin guard, and I always keep pushing his head away from me. Okay. So we're going to look at three chokes from here. The first one we're going to do is going to be a very, very simple choke where I control his head and I'm going to switch this grip to the opposite side. So look what happens. I keep his shoulder tight, keep my knees tight. I'm going to switch my grip to the opposite side. Now I just lost the one thing preventing Andy from pushing into me. And that's okay. I actually want him to push into me because he's going to push towards the choke. This hand is going to grab my shin and I try to get my foot as high on his shoulder as possible, preventing him from chinning, uh, sorry, putting his chin down on his chest. If I go deep, now there's space, he's just going to cup his chin and I just lost the possibility for the choke. So I want to be super shallow and grab it with my forearm here. The hand that's cupped on his shoulder is going to make a fist and it's going to go on this carotid artery on the right side as I extend this arm, lift, push and get the choke there very gently. You could opt, try and collect your arm here and make a frame, or you could extract the arm and get the fist closer and just start to extend there for a very sneaky choke. Now, the more Andy pushes into me from here and tries to put me back, the more he walks into the choke and I get the fist. I haven't lost anything here. So for example, Andy is super tough and he does get his chin underneath, boom, super quick. I just clear the arm and I'm back in the position. So let's see it from this angle. So we get into the guard, we AB, we get the overhook, and we work our legs up to a hierarchy of pins. As soon as we get here, we control and extend, switch, and get into the shoulder pin guard. I keep pushing his head away until I decide to go for the choke. I'm already setting up my fist or my hand on his right carotid artery. And this one is not going to go over, but I prefer to put it underneath, grab shallow grip, and keep my elbow tight to his chest. So don't lock it here, because he'll just tuck his chin and go away. Now I haven't like lost anything, so if he goes for that, he goes to escape, boom. We're just back in the position. And the more he pushes his head out, so we'll put, go underneath and push your head away, the easier I go for the omoplata. But in this case, I want to choke him. So I keep my elbow tight, get the fist in to this side, uh, pull my arm, push my fist, and close the distance on the choke. That's it. So the second one, I'm going to start off in the, sh in the same shoulder pin position. For the second choke, we're going to get a bit more advanced. I'm going to hold my shin here. I'm going to extract the arm that's having the shoulder pin. I'm going to keep my knees tight, pulling him down, pushing him away. Now this hand goes underneath and I'm going to grab my shin, preferably on the inside, like this. We're going to do a cross collar choke, like in uh, the kimono, but as, assuming we don't have the kimono and no gi, we're going to use my shin as the collar. So same thing applies. I want to keep my elbow low. The higher I keep it, which is pretty hard here, but if he tucks his chin, there's no choke. I could still continue for the angle for the omoplata, but I want to choke him. So elbow deep. This hand goes as close as possible to my shin. And now I bring both of my elbows together and extend them like a scissor motion to get the choke there. So once again, we're in the shoulder pin. Uh, most people fear the omoplata here. So they want to push back as much as possible. That's when I just slide under, grab, and catch my shin here. Walk it up, catch, bring my elbows down, and flare them to the side. Once again, if he breaks my angle, breaks my grip here, works his head off, 
I just clear the head and go attack for the omoplata. So it's the safer option to go for one of these two chokes. A final choke, same setup. We can either be in the shoulder pin or we can be in the overhook, it doesn't matter. We have an angle, we're starting to attack my angle. Keep my knees tight. Now, as soon as Andy starts to push back into me, I'm not going to push him back and resist. I'm actually gonna let him go. I'm even going to help him. So my second hand comes off, either from the overhook guard or the shoulder pin guard. And as soon as he starts pushing and committing, I'm gonna cup his head and turn it to the side. This hand is going to be my choking hand and I'm gonna cup his skull down. If I cup his neck, and he's just gonna lift his head and there's no choke here. If I cup his skull, lift your head please. Here. And I switch my grips, I back elbow, catch the figure four and squeeze for the ninja choke or the front dars. So if you know what a dars choke is, it's gonna be the same thing or see it as a rear naked choke but from the, from the front side, so a front naked choke. Now in order to get there, the cool thing is Andy isn't super aware of this choke. If he feels me doing this, he might see me coming up for guillotine. That opens up my whole guard. So for the ninja choke or the front naked choke, I don't have to open up that much. And he's actually walking right into it. So he starts to push and commit. As soon as I feel that I'm almost losing the position, I'm gonna let him slide and grab his head and pull and change my angle. Okay, I'm gonna grab his skull, back elbow, and don't lift like a guillotine, but squeeze like a rear naked choke. In my opinion, I like this one most out of all the chokes we just showed, but it's the one where I lose most of my position. Not as much as with going for the omoplata, but more so than with the first choke or the second choke. So once again, from a different angle, final choke, the ninja choke or the front naked choke. So we're either in uh, overhook guard or in the shoulder pin guard. I'm trying to keep an angle. The only thing I have to be constantly aware of is Andy either pushing me back on my shoulders or Andy trying to work my leg off and passing my guard. Yeah, so the triangle and the omoplata and the angle are my primary focus. If he doesn't do anything or is just struggling, I'm gonna set up my choke. I'm gonna push his head away and as soon as he overcommits and tries to put me back, pushing, pushing, cup his head, switch angles. So you see my upper body rotating from the left side to the right side. So here, as soon as he pushes, don't just grab his head and be under him. So here it's, it's too easy for Andy to pull out, there's no angle. So I have to commit all the way he pushes and I switch my body. My foot is on the hip so I can make the angle. Now the first thing I do is don't close my arms because he will just pull his head off. Boom, and he's gone. Just lift your head, one, two, three. I'm too late. So the only focus I have is keeping his skull. Yeah? If he tries to pull his head out now, stuck, switch. Now this is the weakest grip, but still, if he tries to pull his head off, I'm, I just have a few seconds. And then I back elbow to the four, uh, figure four choke and squeeze. So the whole thing is uh, consisted from the fact that my arms aren't strong enough to keep his posture. So I try to work my angle. And if you're not flexible enough to do the whole rubber guard thing, then working through your uh, hierarchy of pins from the overall guard to the shoulder pin guard, and then choosing first to go for one of the safe chokes and having a blast with them, eventually maybe leading up to the omoplata or gogoplata or just going for this choke straight away.